Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Soumya Harikrishna. We are starting the new chapter Ecosystem. Ecosystem means it is the functional unit of nature in which all the biotic and the abiotic components are interacting among themselves and also with the surrounding or the physical environment. So our ecosystem should have certain features. When we consider the entire biosphere, ecologists say that it is a huge ecosystem because all the structures needed for an ecosystem are there and also all the functions of an ecosystem are also satisfied. But when we study biosphere as an entire ecosystem, it is very difficult to handle. So inside that biosphere, there are so many small, small ecosystems functioning. A small place where all these parameters are met that forms an ecosystem. So basically biotic and abiotic conditions should be there. We know, uh, last chapter we learned what are biotic and abiotic. Living components are called biotic, which includes uh, starting from microbes, then plants, animals, etc. Whereas the non-living components like uh, temperature, humidity, rainfall, moisture, so soil, uh, so solar input, all these are called uh, abiotic. So, Biotic or living organisms should interact among themselves, but they also need the abiotic factors. Suppose you take your class, you know that there are biotic components, you are all biotic components. There is, there are so lot of uh, abiotic factors in the class like uh, air is there, uh, moisture is there, humidity in the atmosphere, light is there, all these. But still, can we consider it as an ecosystem? No. Why? Because ecosystem should have certain functionality properties also, like uh, productivity. Plants should be there to produce the food so that the other animals and organisms can depend on this food. So only then we call it a self-sustaining system. That is an ecosystem. Okay. So you have to understand that. So simply if a place has a living and non-living organisms, they, that cannot be considered as an ecosystem. It is a functional unit of the nature. Some certain functions should happen so that it is a self-sustaining system. Okay. So when we talk about the different types of ecosystem on this earth, we classify them on different bases. One of the bases is uh, the terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems. Suppose if you see uh, the deserts or grassland or forest, these are all terrestrial ecosystems. But if you see pond, lake, river, ocean, all these are aquatic ecosystems. Apart from this, there are natural and man-made ecosystems also. All these examples I told, whether it is terrestrial or aquatic, they were all natural. But look at a crop field. In the crop field also, plants are there, so that productivity is there. There are insects, birds and uh, small animals are feeding on them. They, and then later they are decomposed. All these are happening. So crop field is also an ecosystem, but it is man-made. Or a small aquarium. Aquarium is a miniature form of a pond where all these uh, functional units are uh, functioning. So, uh, these are the different categories that we discuss. So, in this chapter, first we talk about how the biotic factors or the productivity happens and how the interaction of these uh, uh, different components are happening and finally how the energy flow is happening. All this we will discuss. So, uh, when we uh, start with ecosystem, we need to distinguish between the structure and the functions of an ecosystem. So, when we talk about structure, these are the main points coming under that. First of all, interaction is happening between biotic and abiotic components of the ecosystem. That itself is the uh, main characteristic of an ecosystem. Then second characteristic is species composition. The type or uh, uh, plants and animals living there, we have identified them. So that is the uh, species composition. Third is called a stratification. Stratification means it's a kind of vertical distribution. For example, if you see a forest, you know that there are huge trees with a huge canopies. There will be small trees also. Okay. Below that, the next level there will be shrubs and there will be herbs also. So if you see different levels, the plants are distributed. This vertical distribution or is called a what? The stratification. Now next is a, uh, there are two more uh, points you have to remember as a structure. One is standing crop, then a standing state. Standing crop means any ecosystem you take, any portion of the nature you take, there is a particular amount of biomass present in that area at a particular time. That is called a standing crop. So the available biomass, it is sometimes calculated in number also, uh, that is called a, in a particular area per time, that particular time is called a standing crop. So 
Biomass means what? First you understand, we come across this word quite often, biomass. Biomass means mass of living things. So, suppose there is a plant. What is the content in that plant? That is its biomass. What is the mass in my body? That is also biomass, right? So, usually we measure it in two terms. Fresh weight means the entire thing we just weigh. That is called a fresh weight. But it includes water weight also. But if you remove all water content, dry it and then take the weight. That is called a dry weight. That will give us actual uh, organic content in that because water is gone out. Understood? So, the total biomass, suppose in our area, so suppose this is the forest I am calculating. In this particular area of the forest, imagine there are so many animals, birds, everything. Together, what is the biomass? That is called the, the standing crop at a time. But if I compare it with the desert, same area, but I am not, not drawing the same, okay. Uh, same area, in desert if I see, plants are very less, animals are also very less. So, the standing crop in this area will be very less compared to this. Okay, that's called a standing crop. Now we are coming to another word which is similar to this, that is standing state. Standing state refers to the soil. The soil has a particular amount of minerals and nutrients present in it. That is called a standing state. For example, carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, calcium, magnesium, all these are present in the soil which are available to the plants and that is called the standing state. So, usually you know, standing state also will be high in a forest soil or forest environment compared to the desert environment, right? So, these are the different structural features of ecosystem. But I told you to consider one area of environment as an ecosystem, we should have, uh, follow or we should find certain functionalities there. What are they? First of all, productivity. Means, there should be plants which are the producers only they can capture the sunlight and prepare organic food. So that is productivity. We will learn about it in detail. Next, decomposition. Once these organisms die, whether it is plant or animal, the dead body should be decayed back or biodegradable substances should be decayed back with the help of decomposers, means the some living organism, microbes. Then there should be energy flow. How can energy flow happen? By one eating the other, that is through a food chain or rather a food web. And finally, nutrient cycling also should happen because uh, when organisms absorb nutrients from the soil, like plants absorb nutrients from the soil, by eating it, animals will get it. When plants and animals die, it will go back to the original source, maybe to soil or earth, whatever it is. So this kind of nutrient cycling is also a part of the ecosystem. So these are the four main functions explained in this chapter. We have to learn one by one in detail and apart from this one more portion is added that is succession, ecological succession, Sirar succession and Hydra succession but that portion has been removed from the syllabus now. So we will be discussing each one in detail now. To explain the functionalities of, a, of an ecosystem, we are just trying to see how can we explain with the help of a pond. You know pond is a very simple self-sustaining system. It's a shallow water body. So here different features are there, which is there in a huge biosphere like ecosystem also. For example, biotic, abiotic factors. What are the abiotic factors present in pond? Water and basically soil. So water has all organic and inorganic substances dissolved in it. And at the bottom of the soil also, it is rich and fertile. Then solar input is there coming to the uh, water body. Since it is shallow, so uh, sunlight can reach. Temperature cycle goes on in the uh, water, day length is also there and also climatic factors. All these will be affecting the rate of functioning of this particular ecosystem. Then autotrophs should be there because they are the only ones which can make the food. So the autotrophs are represented by phytoplankton. Phytoplankton are the microscopic plants present in water body and algae that is photosynthetic plants. Then submerged plants can be there or floating plants also can be there. And also uh, marginal plants to the side of the pond, some plants may be there. They all contribute to the productivity in the uh, pond ecosystem. Then there should be consumers, only then energy flow will happen. So zooplankton are there and also some fishes are there, small fish, large fish and all. Then decomposers, fungi, bacteria and some flagellates are there to break down the uh, substances back into the uh, nutrients. So here, Actually, uh, there is a uh, productivity happening with the help of biotic factors. 
then the decomposers decompose it back as a result nutrient cycling is happening and through the food chain there is a, a energy flow also happening in this self-sustaining ecosystem so this is satisfying almost all parameters required for a self-sustaining unit called the ecosystem so we can very well say pond is an ecosystem here energy is coming from the sun and there is a unidirectional flow of energy from the sun to the plant through the consumers and finally it is evolved back into the atmosphere now we are going to discuss each functional component of ecosystem one by one we are starting with the first one productivity we know solar input is constantly required for an ecosystem to survive if solar energy is not there no life why because every organism is depending upon a single source of energy that is called a solar energy right I am talking to you now, I am taking class, so I need a lot of energy. From where did I get the energy? From the food I eat. Where did that energy come from? In the food. From the plants, right? So once it was a part of sunlight, the plants captured that energy, that is light energy, converted it into chemical energy and stored in the plant. That chemical energy, when I consume, it came to me. So it's called an energy flow. So even if I have energy, the ultimate source of energy which I am using now is the sun. So there is a single source of energy, sun for all living organisms. There are exceptions, I am not going into that now. Now, uh, in this we are going to study a few definitions. The mainly you have to remember primary production. As the name indicates, primary production, what is produced first. So here production means what? Production of biomass or organic matter. That is carbohydrate. Who is producing? Plants. Right? So the amount of biomass produced by the plants or the producers in a unit area during a particular period of time. This is represented using uh, two methods. Either we can tell in terms of the weight. So if we are considering weight, we can use the unit gram per meter square. Per meter square, what is the amount of biomass? Or we can tell in terms of energy, kilocalorie per meter square. So it's very evident, suppose uh, a particular area, maybe one uh, or 10 meters square of a forest I am taking, 10 meters square of a desert I am taking, where will be primary production more? Of course in the forest because their plants are more, right, right? So that is called a production. Simply we are seeing what is the total amount of biomass produced in a particular area in a, during a particular period of time. Now, whenever we are adding one more parameter to it, that becomes a rate, means a time if you bring in, then it becomes a rate of, whether it is a chemical reaction or if it is a doing a work anywhere, when we are including time, then that is going into a different level. Suppose I am giving you a small work, okay, uh, maybe some raw materials I am giving, or a, a box of blocks I am giving to two people and I am telling them to make a building. I have given the blueprint of the building also or the design you have to make accordingly and finally I am getting two uh, buildings both are same because the raw materials given was the same the right, design given was the same so I am getting two okay but person A is finishing it in two hours whereas person uh, B is finishing it in five hours so who is having high rate of doing work the first person he finished it in less time so here also production happens everywhere whether it is a desert or a uh, pond or a uh, uh, forest if it is an ecosystem there is production but the rate of production if you calculate that is called a productivity so productivity when we tell primary productivity rate of biomass production is called a productivity for example gram per meter square that is the unit of production per year then it is becoming productivity or kilocalorie per meter square per year there we are considering it's a time also coming as a factor. Now, we are talking about two aspects here. Gross primary productivity and net primary productivity. You know, gross means the total amount available. Net means what is uh, there in our hand. Okay. So, for a very simple example, I will tell you. When you suppose you are considering a person having a particular salary. So, when his salary slip is coming, he is uh, entitled to get maybe 75,000 per month. Of that 75,000, maybe 10,000 he has to give for his PF. Another maybe 20,000 he has taken a loan. They are cutting that for the loan. Maybe another 10,000 he has joined some insurance policy. The, so he is adding to that. Then another 5,000 or 3,000 he is using for a medical insurance. 
So after deducting all this only, he will get the amount in hand. So suppose he has, though he has got 75,000 as his total salary, in a month he may be getting only 45,000 or 40 to 45,000 um, in his hand, which is available for him to spend. So he, though his salary is 75,000, he cannot make a budget or make a plan or spending 75,000 every month because already a, a few sum is deducted from his uh, gross salary. So the, what is available in his hand so that he can spend that is called a net salary. So here also total amount of productivity or total productivity happening in a system is called a gross primary productivity that is happening with the help of the plants. So plants are whatever plants are producing uh, as biomass that is called a total or gross primary productivity. But plants are not going to keep the entire thing they are producing as a reserve so that when animals are eating they can get it. No. Plants have to use it because plants also carry out lot of life processes. They need energy for that. Though their energy needs are comparatively less than animals but they still need some energy. And respiratory loss, energy is wasted in the form of heat from every system. Right. So, this is also quite important. So, gross primary productivity is the total amount of biomass produced. But if you minus or deduct respiratory loss, that is what is lost from the plant body, only that will be kept as a reserve in the plant body. So, if I am consuming a plant, what will I get? Will I get gross or net? I will get only net because gross already from the gross, respiratory loss is happening. So, what I am getting is only net primary productivity. So, consumer for a consumer, what is there? Only net primary productivity. Never GPP can be equal to NPP because always respiratory loss is there. Now, secondary productivity. So, suppose a consumer is eating that producer, means plants, that net NPP coming to my body. Suppose I am eating, I am getting that NPP. Again, my body also will do some respiratory loss. But some amount will be utilized for making my body, building up my body. So my biomass means what? All the organic matter which I have procured through the uh, different organic substances, right? So I am adding it to my biomass. Then that is called a secondary product. I am also utilizing that uh, organic matter for the production of new organic matter in my body. So the production of organic matter by consumers is called a secondary productivity. So Overall production of biomass by plants is primary production. If you consider at a time what is produced, then it is called a rate of productivity, production that is called a productivity. Then what is produced in total is called a gross primary productivity. But large amount of energy will be wasted as respiratory loss. Then what is available is called a net primary productivity. By consuming a plant, the consumer is getting only net primary productivity. Whatever the animal is getting, animal will make use of that for making new organic matter in its body that is called a secondary productivity. Now we will discuss a few factors affecting primary productivity. You know different areas have different productivity. If I simply tell a part of tropical rainforest and the same area in a grassland and the same area in a desert, you can easily say that the tropical rainforest will have high productivity and the desert will have the least and grassland will be medium, right? So how do you know that? There are a few factors are influencing this. First is plant species inhabiting a particular area. So more plant species are there and huge trees and all there means definitely productivity will be very high compared to the area where less plant species are there. Then environmental factors like intensity of light or climatic humidity, temperature etc. Then availability of nutrients. You know how fertile the soil of a forest compared to a sandy soil in desert, right? So that also influences this and also photosynthetic capacity of plants. So these are the factors affecting the productivity in a particular um, area. Now, if you make a comparative study, total productivity on this biosphere is 170 billion tons. Of this, you know, 70% of the biosphere is water, means ocean surround it, and only 30% is land. But if you see the productivity rate, 30% land area is actually carrying out 115 billion tons of biomass production compared to water which is 70% of the biosphere its contribution only 55 billion tons 
Do you know why there is a huge difference? Even though the area covered is more in water, but why productivity is so less in water? The two main reasons are there. First, availability of sunlight. You know, sunlight may be available only up to a particular depth in water. Beyond that, the light cannot penetrate. So, underwater it is pitch dark or those organisms living there does not even know about a celestial object like sun excess. So, they do not depend on photosynthesis as a mode of production of biomass. Understood. So, this another pro problem with the uh, sea or water is the less availability of nutrients, especially the macronutrient like nitrogen. So, these two are making the productivity less in sea water. So if you make a comparative study, you can see that coral reefs which are in the shallow water and their area is so huge, they have higher productivity or maximum productivity. Then comes estuaries, that means where seawater and freshwater meet. Then comes forest. In that forest means tropical rainforest is the highest. So terrestrial ecosystem, if you ask, the maximum productivity is in tropical rainforest. But overall, if it is asked, it is aquatic asked also coral reefs. But overall asked, it, it is actually overlapping. This value, the lower value of this is overlapping with this. But you can consider this as the order. So after forest water will come ocean then grassland, then river, then lake, then pond and finally desert. So the uh, productivity if you see, when it comes to coral reefs, it is around 2400 gram per, uh, gram per meter square per year, uh, estuary is 2200 but when it comes to desert only 90 tons per hectare per year only is the productivity. Hope you understood the structure and function of ecosystem and the first function we discussed is productivity. If you find it useful, please like, share and subscribe to my channel Biology My Passion. Thank you for watching.